This episode of the Nerf Herder Council is brought to you by Audible. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. I'm Kevin Thompson. I'm Chubb Ray from Return of the Jedi. You're listening to the Nerf Herder Council. Warning. The following podcast contains irreverent humor, exceptionally nerdy opinions, potential cursing, and plenty of love for the prequels. If any of the preceding offends you, please turn off this podcast immediately, and may the Force be with you. Why, you stuck-up, half-witted, scruffy-looking nerf herder! You can't use that word! Only we can use that word! You're tuned in to the Nerf Herder Council, your source for Star Wars opinion, conversation, and debate. Featuring your hosts, JT. Stormtrooper armor deflects everything except Orbach hooves. (laughs) They're they're like a horse version of Thomas the Tank Engine. (laughs) AJ. Yeah, Rebels Rebels is a lot like our show, where we think we have a good idea, and then it just fails in execution. (laughs) Steve. The vacuum of space does crazy things to your b-hole out there, man. (laughs) (laughs) On this episode of the Nerf Herder Council, we discuss current and future Star Wars television, the upcoming Clone Wars series, The Mandalorian, Cassian Andor, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is the Nerf Herder Council. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your host, JT. With me are AJ and Steve. We are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download. And if you'd like some customized Nerf Herder Council swag, just go to shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. So uh, we are doing our second show in a week because we screwed up. Two weeks ago, so we're getting back on our normal schedule. Well, uh, Mother Nature screwed us is what happened. Yeah, that wasn't very... <laughs> yeah. Nope. No one was driving over in that stuff, and we're not yeah. smart enough to figure out Skype. <laughs> exactly. We got it now, though. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, we'll we'll see when we have to try that again. Yeah. that's <laughs> Everything's relative. The minute we rely on it, yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, so this is Tuesday of this week, and uh, is it... Thursday or Friday when the Clone Wars debuts on Disney Plus? Friday. Friday, 21st. Okay. So, yeah, we figured that with um, the Clone Wars starting up again this week, uh, the final season, it's what, 12 episodes, correct? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Figured we would just kind of riff on Star Wars television. We've done a lot of stuff about the Rise of Skywalker lately, kind of speculated on that. We got a few ideas for some other stuff coming up, but uh, a lot of stuff about television lately with the Mandalorian rapping and resistance rapping and AJ, you rewatched rebels. Mm -hmm. Um, why you would want to do such a thing. I'm not really sure. Uh, clone wars is coming again on Friday. So figure we'd kind of talk about star Wars television and I, we're kind of stuck with it, right? I mean, Bob Iger said that the movies are quote going on a short hiatus, which isn't it weird? Like the hiatus is going to be three years, which is the normal time to wait for a Star Wars movie. I know. But it feels like forever now because we're, we're spoiled by getting one every year. Yeah. It was it was funny because I don't know. We don't know what they're going to talk about at Celebration this year. And I'm pretty much not going unless some miracle happens. Like I have a windfall of cash and I can get r- way ahead of my financial goals. Um I'm not going. I have the time off of work and I have the tickets and I have the hotel reservation. Uh But... It's the money. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll be going by myself if yeah. I do, because you're not going. Uh, but since we don't know what they're going to be talking about, I was looking at my paid time off schedule at work today. And I was like, and I have it, you know, I've, I've allotted time to take that Thursday and Friday off so I can watch the panels live as they're streamed from Celebration. Uh-huh. So I'm basically taking time off for Celebration. I'm just not going to, you know, fly across the country to Anaheim and spend all the ridiculous money. 
And I started thinking, I was like, well, do I really need to take Thursday off or can I just take Friday and save myself a day? Like I can watch the panels later. And then I thought, you know, as soon as I make that decision, they're going to have the big announcements right at the opening panel. And I'm going to not be able to watch it live and I'm going to have to catch it by everyone's damn Twitter feeds and it's going to ruin the surprise for me. Oh, yeah. You're going to be kicking yourself. Oh, if you don't my gosh. Do that. You yeah. Know that. So and I know at work, I'll just be streaming with nobody looking and getting absolutely nothing accomplished. So it's just better to use the PTO. But um, yeah, so I wanted to start the television conversation by asking you a question, AJ. Um, I obviously have not finished Clone Wars. Steve has not finished Clone Wars. So we're kind of coming into this blind, whereas you are not. Did you see the episode title for the first episode that's coming out on Friday? No, actually, I've then this is sorry. This is going to be good. Did we or did we not already have an episode called The Bad Batch? No, that was that the, the stuff that we saw at Anaheim that was like the animatics and the kind of like the right. That's okay. that's what they put out. Um, they put out the story reels for the Bad Batch arc. So these episodes have actually all been shown in unfinished form on YouTube. Remember, they, they published that and the C- Crystal Crisis on Utapau. They, they sh- Are, is that what they're doing for these episodes? Because the episode one is the Bad Batch and some of the they, they have like screen caps on Star Wars Newsnet. They, they they officially released like some art from the show, yeah. which it looks awesome, by the way. Um, but some of the helmets are kind of wonky with paint jobs. And I was like, well, I thought so. It's, it's interesting to me if that's what they're doing, that they would release something that a lot of the hardcore fans have already seen. Yeah, they just they just finished the episodes that they never thought they were going to get a chance to air. <laughs> a bunch of lazy asses. Well, kind yeah. of. It's kind of. I mean, and we saw that clip. We saw the rough animatics celebration of Ahsoka going um, down into Coruscant and having trouble with the bike. Apparently, that's a scene from one of the episodes. So I don't think they wrote anything new. I think these are all legit ideas that were already in the pipeline before the show got axed. Did they say that they were that the show was complete and they just never got to finish that last season? Is is that the case? Like. That was all done, and they were gonna wrap it up with one more season, but they didn't get a chance to. Um, I, if I remember right, didn't they say that they actually had ideas for season seven and eight? Like they weren't planning on wrapping it up, but I, I guess now there's enough stories. Yeah, and they. What might have happened? Like, yeah, I'm sure they could have told a bunch more, but I gotta think that once they did Rebels and everything, and they moved forward in the timeline and told more stories, they they kind of had to scrap some of the stuff. Because it would have probably contradicted whatever they wrote for Rebels. Oh, that's not. Yeah, yeah. I guess that that makes sense. All right. Yeah, I, like I said, I haven't I haven't finished it. I watched several episodes from season three on because you had told me that's when it starts getting good. Mm-hmm. And the more I've, more I've delved into it, I don't know if you've seen this, Steve, but if you delve into the Clone Wars, like most fans say, just give it. You know, just slog your way through up the seasons one and two and season three starts getting good yeah i think i made it I've made it somewhere into season four and not that it was bad i just haven't gotten back to it yeah i, I i'm the, watching the last thing i really remember is um uh, uh uh the ass clown that made the clones turn against each other oh pong krell yeah. yes that that's like the last like story arc I remember watching was him getting the troopers to come from opposite sides and kind of go against you. It was like, Oh yeah, they they might be dressed up in our armor. You know, don't fall for that. So yeah. Yeah. That was hard to watch, man. That's dark stuff for a kid's show. Yeah. Yeah. And then old boy, uh, assassinated him in the uh, jail cell or whatever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There was a lot of like the last thing I remember watching. Yeah. I'm doing it in order of, uh, to make things, uh, quote unquote chronological mm-hmm. because the, everything was out of order when they released it. For, I, I, I still don't understand what the hell the point of that was, but so I'm, I think it's like you watch like episodes one and two, and then you go to an, like an episode in season three and then you have to watch like the rest of them through episode 16 or 17 in season one. So I'm unfortunately, I've had to sit through a couple of Jar Jar episodes. Like the most recent one is with where they first introduced Hondo Onaka Oh, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. they got that episode where the I mean I don't know wh- how this happened but they had Ahmed best voicing Jar Jar but now this most recent episode where they're escaping Hondo it's some other guy 
I'm like, yeah. oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even like a good replacement. <laughs> oh, it's, it's normal. No offense jar- to that guy, but it's normal Jar Jar. But then the very next episode, he's got a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, seriously, it's really, it's really bad. I'll, is, I'll, is it Jar Jarring? <laughs> It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, no, it's, that was pretty rough. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't. I mean, anybody could do a voice acting job. I have the utmost respect for because it it's it's very cool and it takes a lot of talent. But that just was not a good choice for replacing Jar Jar's voice. Like you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, I old, noticed it right away. I'm like, does he have a cold? <laughs> like, yeah. what the hell? The only other voice substitution that happened in that show that I know of was. Um, Ian Abercrombie unfortunately died, so they had to get a new Palpatine. Ah, was he really dead though? I hope or- so. They buried him. <laughs> <laughs> I went. I went for the Rise of Skywalker joke, and you went for the old standard. All right. <laughs> you know what's crazy though? They got Tim Curry as the replacement voice. Tim Curry was the Emperor. Yeah, I didn't know that. And the weird thing was, like, I thought he was really sick though. He's. I thought he had like. Well, I mean, palsy or something. He can't. It's like 2012. We're talking about. Yeah, but I thought it was. Oh well, I, I must have misread. But yeah, it was weird because um, I forget which way it went. But like Tim Curry was a better either Emperor or Palpatine. I'm not sure which. Like one did the Chancellor voice better, and one did the Sith Lord voice better. Okay, and so you kind of like got a, an even trade off there where. Like one dude's talking in the Chancellor voice, like that's not very good. But then he goes into like evil Sith Lord, like oh yeah, that's pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I, I was looking that up, and the guy who voiced uh, Jar Jar's name's B.J. Hughes. And on Wikipedia, you know, sometimes they'll put like a quote of the character you're looking at or whatever. The quote on the top of it just says, "Who is B.J. Hughes? Jimmy Mac." <laughs> 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 like that's damn like, like that's just and of course i turned the monitor off that's just all it says on the damn thing screw it i'll show you in a little bit <laughs> that worked excellently steve good job <laughs> thump uh as long as it's not the recording computer we're good to go <laughs> um, yeah the pop in the headphones made me nervous there yeah no i mean i it's 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 definitely hard to get into i think at first and i but, but then again it, it, it got more adult as it went on is what it seems to me because the stuff i remember seeing later in the show this is stuff with like you know i mean the episode with like 3po and jar jar doing their little hijinks i'm just like oh god that's yeah. cringeworthy <laughs> <laughs> it really does yeah, damn that-, that poor guy wow it he even says did uh, he do anything else or was it just like one episode um it, all it says on Wikipedia is when asked by the Force cast, Lucasfilm was actually unable to find out who B.J. Hughes was. Uh, the, <laughs> Force ca- the Force cast a- asked Dave Filoni who exactly he was, and Filoni simply said that he replaced Ahmed Best as the voice of Jar Jar in the series, and that's about as far as he could go. <laughs> that must have so it's something bad must have happened with that guy. Man, I guess so. It's probably a guy that's mopping the floors out at Lucasfilm. They just went, "You come do some lines real quick." <laughs> I mean, was sick that day. <laughs> just, just come do some lines real quick. He's we'll, basically like Donnie in the Ted movies. <laughs> we'll give you here's fre- your screen test. <laughs> Say bomb bad. <laughs> right. We'll give you sixty bucks. <laughs> read these lines real quick. <laughs> Say Misa Bombad <laughs> while you're whining and screaming. Whoa! You're hired. You, you got to come on in, man. <laughs> Can you get a Tums stuck in your throat and scream into a microphone? <laughs> oh, we are so brutal. Uh, so, all right. Okay. I, I was just going to say, I'm like, it's probably the only other black guy looking working at Lucasfilm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Good Lord, man. What about Billy D. Williams? He doesn't actually go to Lucasfilm. He's got better stuff to do. <laughs> he did make his money. Yeah. So <laughs> he sits outside the gate with his Colt 45 and says, I'm not coming in there. <laughs> not going near it. I don't want to play Jar Jar. <laughs> um, so, AJ, are you looking forward to this? Like, I mean, you were a huge fan, or are you a little nervous? Or now that you know that it's basically stuff you've seen. Are you just kind of looking at it from an artistic perspective to see like how the animation's improved or oh, it's it's guaranteed to be solid. I mean, one, we already know the Bad Batch story arc because it was already on YouTube. I wonder if that's still up there, by the way. 
I wonder if because I mean it was, oh, it was yeah. officially released, so I wonder if they like took those down because they're putting because them out of yeah, episodes. Yeah. yeah. That would be interesting. All it said on Wikipedia is that it was debuted in April 2015. It was a four-story arc. Yeah. It, celebration, and that's as far yeah, as that's... it went. So we, we know we're getting that. We're getting the Siege of Mandalore, which has been referenced a couple of times in Rebels and also in the Ahsoka book. Yeah. So that's going to be cool to see how that plays out because I really have no idea where that fits in the timeline. Like, was that going on when Order 66 dropped or like how – does that all fit in, you know? Mm-hmm. Cause obviously Ahsoka survived order 66. Um, Rex made reference in rebels to having his chip taken out. So, um, correct. You haven't gotten into season six yet. Have you? Mm-mm. Okay. Um, well, it's <laughs> been out for I just years in the middle of season one. It's, it's been out for years, so it's not a spoiler anymore. Just, yeah. Well, I, tough. It, it's um, not through the star Wars YouTube page, but it's definitely on YouTube still. Nice. All right. So, yeah, um, so there's a story arc in season six where um, Arc Trooper Fives ends up, um, well, one of the Jedi and Je- Jedi, one, is it, of, one uh, of the clones ends up, their chip goes off goes, prematurely. Goes crazy or something? Yeah, their chip goes off prematurely, and then um, he, he kills, kills the Jedi. Yeah. Basically, they've got a chip in their head that is what's activated for Order 66, and that there's a whole investigation, and Fives uncovers that, like, the Kevin Owens put it in there on purpose, is it Kamino Owens or Kamin Owens? Uh, according to the show, it's Kamin Owens. So dummies, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, he 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 uncovers the plot basically. Okay, I I saw that, and you know they engineer it all, and Palpatine ends up killing him, and it's so far fetched, no one believes him anyway. And but um, his his last stand before he ends up dying is uh, talking to Rex and Anakin, and uh, so Rex you know has heard of this and. Apparently by rebels, you know, he's got this scar on his forehead and so does uh, Commander Wolf and Gregor, too. Okay. And Gregor's a, another clone that you mean yeah. Clone Wars. Um, so they all took their chips out voluntarily. And I guess that's how they explain how they didn't flip when Order 66 happened. That's very cool. Man, that that, ep- that episode of Rebels is still the one that stands out the most to me mm-hmm. with those three and the, the AT-AT battle and the Sandstorm. Yeah, that was cool stuff. I'm like, why couldn't they have done more stuff like that on that show? There, See, that's the thing. That's where I think like a, a streaming rewatch on Disney Plus is well worth your time because when you're not waiting a week between episodes and you just like run them all together, the, the narratives are much more cohesive. And there's a lot of okay. cool stuff that actually carries on and, you know, characters come back and there's just more continuity continuity to it in general when it's binge worthy can you still skip over the crappy space whales <clears throat> uh yeah i i hate that idea <laughs> i still hate it i just can't even believe that someone would let that through it's a whale that floats in space and it goes into hyperspace like the millennium falcon get the fuck out of here <laughs> get the fucking fuck out of here <laughs> well that was one of the big things through the whole through the whole story that kind of came to light this time is there are so many animal connections. It, it, actually, I think it got a little lazy towards the end. Do you remember like the, the friggin' wolves? Yeah. Like, Oh my God, now we got these force wolves and they can do anything. They can teleport you across the planet and they can, you know, eat stormtroopers, but you know, no blood or anything. We're just going to like chomp them a bit and they just fall down. Like, <laughs> Or, and, and, of course, there was the episode with the uh, the TIE Defenders where the Stormtroopers get distracted chasing after a cat. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's another one that got me. It's like, oh my God damn it. this is our top secret project. Woo, kitty. <laughs> like, what? Maybe what, this, is, what is this? Maybe this explains why there's been a storyboard artist uh, job opening at ILM for like two, <laughs> for two years hey, now. I can make <laughs> right? Not that I was on the Disney I website totally looking for that. jobs the other yeah, day, right? but dude, there was totally like three or four openings at Lucasfilm, and one of them is just a storyboard artist that was posted in like 2018 or something wow. like that. <laughs> I can do crappy thumbnail sketches. That's what I tried to tell my wife. I'm like, you're just doing thumbnail sketches. She's like, know. I'm have not you, qualified to do that. Have, I'm you, like, have you seen what storyboard art looks like these days? That ain't no thumbnail sketch. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's worth a shot. What the heck? Yeah. I've, hey, why not? Yeah, no. That I mean, that's and that's the thing with <laughs> you that just show. Go in there when they interview you, go, hey, this has been up on your website for three years. You clearly have not found anything better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just bring them like a flip book. It's just like you got like stick figures. And you're like, look, he's jumping. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like Panda Baba in the, in the, in the robot chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just has yeah, the house can... with the flower. <laughs> I can still draw with my other arm. Sorry, Panda. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Like that, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to try and, and watch it again. Like you said, AJ, but it's just like certain things just stick. I mean, like you said, like the, I think one thing that'll really like resonate with you now that you just got through fallen order is, is Kanan. Cause it's, it, it's like Caleb Sestis. Caleb Sestis? No. Ka- Cal, 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 Cal Kestis. Cal I'm, I'm fusing the two. Cause Caleb Dune is, uh, Kanan's original yes. name. Yeah, Calcutta, uh, whatever you're talking yeah. about there. <laughs> Calcutta. So, <laughs> that's his rap name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like the, the L- first You couple's... gotta put Lil in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lil Calcutta. <laughs> so damn stupid. So yeah, like the first couple seasons is, is like there's a lot of there's a lot of Kanan. He's doing like... halftime at the Boonty Eve Classic next year. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But if you remember, there's a lot of like Kanan not knowing how to teach Ezra because yeah. he's been in hiding and he never finished his training. He was a Padawan when Order 66 hit. So he's like, I'm just figuring this out, man. I I'm supposed to teach you like I don't even know this stuff. And it's a really cool like angle on it because Ezra's like, I never met a Jedi. You're like the best, most powerful thing ever. And Kanan's like, I'm a freaking imposter, man. I suck. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, it, it just so many so many things were hard for me to get over. Like it just, as the episodes and the seasons went on, I mean, I get it. Stormtroopers, ho ha ha. They don't hit things. But I mean, there was that one episode where they were on like transports, like flying side by side, like five feet away from each other. And the stormtroopers are shooting over shoulders and wild. I'm like, come on, man. Really? Seriously? Like, I mean, it's just those kinds of things are just stupid. You know, if you want to have the stormtroopers miss, have them further away, because then you'd be like, okay, at least it's not. Oh, I get it. Stormtroopers miss. Okay, that's fine. It's far away. Not like you know, not like he's like you know about to shoot up their nose, right? (laughs) Come on. So it just too many things in that show took me out of the, you know, like like I've always said, I can suspend disbelief better than anybody when it comes to Star Wars. When was the last time a stormtrooper was actually menacing? Death Troopers, Rogue One. Yeah. Those were in Rebels, and those got nerfed, too, unfortunately. Oh, you know, the, all, all it, I it, remember it, from... Good point. The, why did they take away those cool, like, decoded voices? Instead, they talk normally. I'm like, no! That's the cool part of the Death Troopers. You don't know what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And it's all, like, digital and stuff. That's creepy. Not... I want to go get a burger. I'm like, damn it. That's what stormtroopers do. Yeah. I was going to say the last time a stormtrooper was menacing was the one that was punching baby Yoda in the face. Oh my God. <laughs> could you, could you believe that when that happened? I was watching that going, how did they let this happen? Because you know, that shut they, up asshole. Yeah. Punching a baby. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, how, how did, why did, did they not think that people were going to throw a fit about this? And of course, Star Wars social media did not disappoint. <laughs> That was, oh my God, people were just all up in arms. I cried and I was just so sad. And I like, it's a puppet. (laughs) I get it. It's you're punching a baby. I get it, but it's a puppet. It's a fake show. Stop it. Sarah McLaughlin's going to do a commercial with baby Yoda. Oh, seriously. (laughs) They're the bad guys. They're supposed to do things that make you sad and angry. Yeah. That's good storytelling. Uh huh. See, this is why whenever we get like tweeted in a in a ne- group tweet next season, the tweet- they're just gonna have Baby Yoda in that little sack, and the stormtroopers are gonna start dunking it in like a thing of water and holding oh it. Oh my underneath. god, they're waterboarding him. <laughs> just waterboard the child. Yeah, yeah. the whole season's gonna be nothing but Baby Yoda torture. <laughs> They're gonna like hook electrodes up to his nipples and stuff like that to like a a speeder bike battery. All kinds of horrific shit going down. Like, ugh. It's going to be Guantanamo in a galaxy far, far away. It will be. It will be. Yeah. I, no, I mean, it, it, I, I, it's, it is good storytelling, and that's, you know, they should be evil. I'm just kind of surprised they did it. You know, it was like, I'm like, man, you know you're going to catch hell for this. I see. I didn't have a problem with it, though, because the whole the whole way it came off was just like, it was comedy. It, it didn't come oh, off yeah. as like vicious. I was going to say, is well, it bad that he punched baby Yoda the first time? And I just went, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, well, he did it multiple like, times. And I was like, wow, this is, I, I knew immediately that it was going like, to blow up. It's like it you did. think it's funny, but the reality in your head is that you're, it instantly goes to, 
wow, I can't imagine how uh, fandom's going to spin this one around. <laughs> well, I mean, and and it di- and they did. They threw a fit because he was punching a baby or whatever. And I it's bet like, you the poor guy in that stormtrooper outfit probably doesn't even work in Hollywood anymore yeah. or something. They they tracked him down and they found a way to like pull his friggin' SAG card or something like that, <laughs> so he can't even work anymore. <laughs> was, well, wasn't there a story well, that, that had to? He got a little too the, into it, and and they were like. The, the the prop itself, the puppet was too expensive. Like, dude, you got to hold off a little bit, man. That, that costs a lot of money. I know who it was. It was BJ Hughes. That guy, <laughs> that guy, he's like, son of a bitch, I got fired again. One episode apiece. What the heck? <laughs> well, at least I got Kenobi and Cassie and Andor coming up. <laughs> right. I got I gotta say, man, like stuff like this where it's like i just like you know made fun of people that were just crying over baby yoda getting punched this is probably why when i tweet stuff and like a comment in a where we're mentioned in a in a tweet that has a whole bunch of different podcasts in it half the responses come up with that little thing that says this this twitter account limits who can see their tweets (laughs) and i'm like does that mean that they blocked us or muted us is that what that means probably i think because there's an awful lot of other podcasts that muted us, and I just have to say, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting so close to not giving a shit. Like, because if we say something, people just have to be politically correct. I'm like, dude, enough. You know, it's just an opinion. Everyone has one. Just stop. You know, not everything in Star Wars is beautiful and rosy and perfect. It just isn't. Okay. Anakin Skywalker murdered like 30 kids. All right. You weren't whining about that one. You know, but punching one baby Yoda, all hell breaks loose. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> like, so, yeah, maybe it's a badge of honor that we're getting muted by all these people. You know, we'll, sh- we'll show up to the we'll show up to the celebration of the podcasters hang out one year and just get shunned <laughs> and it'll be awesome. <laughs> and then we'll just walk into conversations and say the most offensive Star Wars shit ever. <laughs> <laughs> just be like, if you, you know, it's the shittiest concept in Star Wars. Raylos bunch of idiots and just watch people start throwing fruit at us and everything <laughs> we won't even mean it we'll just do it just to egg people on that's our goal for next celebration we got to get a bunch of t-shirts printed up with the most inflammatory statements possible <laughs> that, we should change our tagline the nerf herd accounts are the most muted podcast in the galaxy <laughs> that's why we only have 23 listeners hey but our 23 listeners are very dedicated and they, <laughs> that they, they are they probably appreciate the fact that we talk like this <laughs> they tune it they they they, they listen to all the other shows for the positivity, but they're like, I really want to say something that's not that positive. I'm going to go listen to the Nerf Herder console. They'll say it for me. <laughs> right. So, uh, but anyways, yeah, I mean, I, I'll probably go back and watch rebels again. Cause there were, there were a lot of things that I thought were cool. Um, I liked the art of it. I thought it was interesting in a lot of spots. That was cool. Um, there's some dark stuff in that thing too, man. Like, okay. The stormtroopers are buffoons, but the empire in general, like, boy, especially because remember that came out like when Rogue One was hitting theaters. Yeah. So there were a lot of tie ins to that. Obviously, same timeline and everything. But mm-hmm. they were really building up like the menace of the Empire and and the crap that they pull off. Like, you know, Lethal becomes just a giant shithole over the course of that series. Yeah. Like, every time you go back and, and they say like, well, yeah, they're just stripping the planet raw and polluting everything in the process. They don't care about nothing. Well, that was, I mean, that was something that they pulled out of the EU because that's what the Empire was doing, like strip mining planets, Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the the Heir to the Empire series. It it, it was. You remember that Thrawn episode where um, the rebels, rebel sympathizers at least, had infiltrated the factory on Lothal and were purposely building defective equipment? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember how Thrawn made one of the workers sit on his own speeder Uh bike till it blew up? Uh Uh-huh. Like. Dude, that is cold. <laughs> See, that was one thing I wish they would have done. Like, like Thrawn to me, they almost didn't do enough with. Like, I thought I thought they they did a good job of getting across how like calculating he is and what a military strategist he is. But it it was almost like he didn't really do enough. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't since I didn't watch that. I'm not really sure, but I'm guessing kind of like Maul esque or. No, because he was in it. It's just it wasn't like he was, you know, for for the main. So it wasn't bad a guy, really cool guy that just got shoved out of the wayside like immediately. He just could no. He was in there. He just could have done more. I thought. No, no the well, damn the damn force keeps screwing with the guy. That's that's the crappy part. Yeah, they didn't give him the Islamari. Like, uh, no, not the Islamari, but they, they did give him Rook. They gave him his assassin. Yeah, they which gave him cool. Rook. Yeah, but. Uh, 
but no. So like the the two main times that he really like was gonna crush the rebels, there was force crap that got in the way. The Bendu bailed him out the first uh, time. That, I did not like the Bendu either. It was just and then the why. second time, the damn the damn uh, force wolves, the loath wolves, bailed him out until the Purgle, your hyperspace whales, showed up and took him off into hyperspace to points unknown. Man. Otherwise, yeah, but he spent most of his time hanging back and letting the rebels win, be like, I'm gathering information. Okay, well, when are you actually going to do something with it? Yeah. I mean, they did a great job portraying him. I just I just wish that he would have done a little bit more, you know? Yeah. And like I say, I'll, I'll go back and watch it. It's just because I, I know there was stuff that I liked, but I just keep getting derailed by things like the world between worlds and, you know, the space whales and. They did some course correction, though, because once Thrawn came in, they kind of backed off on the Inquisitor stuff. You didn't really have any problems with Inquisitors after the Maul episode. Once once Maul was out of the picture, the Inquisitors were, too, because Maul's introduction was when they killed all the Inquisitors. So that was pretty sweet. But I was about I was about to give a spoiler and I decided not to. So, well, not all the Inquisitors, but, you know, the ones that were in the show. Because there were three of them on, uh, was it Malachor, I think the name of the planet was? And that's where Ahsoka actually faced Vader. Yeah. Yeah, so. Okay. So, well, so there I was just, some cool stuff there. I just because remember that first season when like we were kind of led to believe that the first Inquisitor is supposed to be like this big badass. And then they kill him. And then they're like, oh, yeah, there's two more over here, though. <laughs> yeah. Just go. Oh, so that guy wasn't shit then. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is dumb because he was called the Grand Inquisitor. Like he was the best one. And then they just throw like two more like, OK, but they're not as good. You maybe he was us. maybe he was like the grandparent. <laughs> That's why they killed him so easy, because he was like an old dude. Maybe he I was kept over on, the hill. I kept on waiting for at least one of the Inquisitors in that show to be revealed as a former Jedi and and not just like saying they're a former Jedi because they all kind of were, but like a notable one. Like how easy would it have been for them to make like the second sister, the one that Sarah Michelle Geller voiced, make her be Barris Offie? You know, the the because she was the turncoat at the end of season five that tried to frame Ahsoka. Like, that would have made perfect sense. Like, oh, well, OK, well, now she became an Inquisitor and now she's no, she's just nobody <laughs> and she's dead. So who cares? <laughs> Yariel <laughs> poof. <laughs> <laughs> the long neck and everything. Yariel, is that you? That isn't me. It's not me under the mask. I could see your neck. It's not me under the mask. <laughs> this won't come off it. <laughs> um, Rebels did give us the uh, the Mary Poppins lightsaber, too. So we love that one, right? Yeah. Sabercopter, go! Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I that, remember the first time I saw Go-Go Gadget <laughs> lightsaber, and I'm yeah. like, wow, I'm watching this right now. <laughs> well, okay. in, 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 the, in, the defense, in defense of the show, we did get more Saw Gerrera. Yes. More Saw Gerrera is always a good thing. Those. OK. See, I just watched all this. It's all fresh. So I got I got takes. Uh, so the Geonosis episode uh, where they introduced Saw Gerrera and they've got. Remember, the, the Geonosian was named Click Clack, <laughs> which was garbage, hot steaming garbage. But man, I actually felt bad for that thing because Saw was a friggin dick to that creature. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was like, man, oh, man. Speaking of the Inquisitors and stuff, uh, since I haven't gotten that far into the game, uh, who was was that the second sister that you fight like way at the beginning of the game, or is that a different? The ones in the game are the second. Is it the second? I think that yeah, second and ninth. Okay, because I I do remember fighting her, so like and the then you don't sister in the show then, because it's not the same character. Because I, I, I can't remember this because I haven't played it in a while. And I was like, I do remember fighting the Inquisitor and then like she whoops your ass and you run away on the ship. And that's all I know of that. But. Yeah. No, I, I actually just beat that the other day. So or hell could it be the same Inquisitor? I don't know where. where that, the I'm not sure of the timeline. timeline yeah. yeah. I, I, I know who the second Inquisitor is in the game. I'm trying to remember if it was a character. I don't. Is it someone notable? Not to me. Okay. But her, her past identity is revealed. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that was, they that love, was cool. They love tying in all sorts of other stuff. It probably came from a book or a comic. Yeah. No, it was it was cool. 
I mean, like, I mean, there's there's Night Sisters on Dathomir, which was pretty pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, Night Brothers. Mm-hmm. So the Night Nephews were a little weird, but you know the 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 Night Step Cousins were the ones that are real bastards. So you know the the Night Second Cousins twice removed. <laughs> yeah, Re- twice removed. <laughs> there's <laughs> multiples. Um, yeah, no, they 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 do tell you who it is and. I, I mean, I know it's not TV, but just real quick, that game was awesome. I, I, I still want you to play it so I can actually discuss it with you guys, but but I don't want to give it away because I know like I avoided spoilers except for one because, like I said before in the show, it was in the thumbnail of a video. So I was like, oh, man. Um, Someone needs to either make me better at that game or buy me a faster PS4 because with the amount that I die, I just can't stand the time it takes to respawn. You got you to gotta do what I did, which was I, I built up my stims. I, d- I did look up where to find extra stim containers so that I knew where I could find like on the different planets, like go and so instead of having like, what did you start with either two, two or three? Two, yeah. yeah. I mean, you I got get, four. You can get up to five. So the one, the one that was really hard to get, so I'm almost there and I still suck. That's not uh, encouraging. Well, no, on that, I mean, you know, what one is really, that's hard- when you got to bite the bullet and just drop the difficulty and say, screw it. I want to see the story. So I don't really care if I'm cheating. My that's way what all my this. friends did. And I, yeah. I only did that on like the Guardians. Like, if I, I did it a whole bunch of times and I still couldn't beat it, and then I'm like, all right, I'm I'm sick of doing the same thing over again. I'm starting to get annoyed. Then I would change it. But the, I mean, honestly, the one did you get, did you get the extra stim that's like basically like on like pretty much the opening screen of the whole game? I guess not. Yeah, there's I don't know. dude. It's a bitch because you go down. Have you played the part where you have to like force push the the big spheres? Yeah. I remember okay. doing oh, I that. Get that. I remember one. doing that. Are you yeah. sure? The one that's in the cage? It's like, yeah, yeah. That took me forever. Oh, yeah. I was like, man, do I really need this extra stim this bad? See, like, I'm used to, I like puzzle games, but this is are, the are first you're talking one the one where like, you were in the room and you had to keep opening the doors and making the wind blow it so you could get it into the center of the room. No, that's no. kind of what trains you on how to do it. But then you got to go back to the planet you start on. And there's one of those balls yeah. that you have to like, okay. yeah, Pagano. I remember you had to, it trains you to do it, but if you actually get it into the center of that room, it opens something special underneath it. Or yeah, I know like it's that. like that. But the, the problem is like, there's this room basically underneath where the mantis first lands, like when you first start the game and it, you, it's behind a wall, like a, like a mesh wall. And you have to do the force push, but it's on this like curved track, so it takes forever to get it to go. All, like if you if you hit it too hard, it flops off the track and then goes all the way back around the beginning. So I mean, dude, it sucks. It's like that county fair game with the bowling ball where you've got to get it like over the first hump, but not over the second hump. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> it, it, like, that's so a good, precise. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah, but I'm used to puzzle games, but usually they're like it's like a Zelda game where it's like gridded out, where you can only go in one direction at a time, where like it's. If it's close enough, it's close enough. These are not like that. The, the, yeah. Those stupid ball puzzles are like, no, you get it to the pixel on your own or forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Start from the beginning. Yeah. There was there was a few of those puzzles that just I was like, what the hell am I supposed to be doing here? Mm-hmm. So it's but yeah. It's, it's, I, I remember being in that room when you first started doing that stuff with opening and closing the doors. I was probably in there for like forty five minutes getting that goddamn ball yeah. into the center of the room. There, there, there's a few puzzles later in the game that had me just like really pissed off. Yeah, then I remember going past that, and there was a couple where you had to shoot it somewhere, and then it gets shot up to a second level, and you have to move it across. And I'm like, <sighs> yeah. Like Force Unleashed was just hack and slash. That's what I want to play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could do that once you beat the game. Then you just wander around just like murdering things and getting nothing but like as many, you know, uh force point skill points as possible so you have a hundred percent of everything. Uh you you mean like that amazing second playthrough of every God of War video game when your stats are just maxed and you yep. start over again? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so much fun. <laughs> I, I I have that in this little gauntlet game that I got. <laughs> like one of those five dollar PlayStation like playstation store games but um so i'm wondering with with fallen order being out now um do you think we're going to see any tie-ins in the kenobi series because they've got to tell some sort of a broader story there it can't I, just be a dude no sitting on tatooine i actually don't because if i if i if what i read was correct i think didn't they say now it's only gonna be like four episodes something like that. it's basically yeah. just like the length of a long movie Split into four parts what the hell's the point of that i it sounds to me like it, it's ba- okay it's based on the movie script. There was a script for a movie. There was going to be a Kenobi movie. 
And then they did all that dickery with Solo, and then they decided not to make a Kenobi movie because they're not people don't want to see it. No, you just you did it wrong. Um, so from what it sounds like to me, I think they basically took this script for the movie. They had somebody rework it, and then they're just cutting it into four parts. So it's basically like a long, a long movie, you know. So. I still have no idea what the story is going to be like. What revelations can possibly come out of this to make it worth even producing in the first place? Well, that's the one thing I'm excited for it because because one thing that they've done an excellent job of, I think, outside of the you know the the Skywalker saga, which has its its flaws here and there, but all the other stuff that they've done really have had like plot revelations and twists and tie-ins that have made a lot of sense almost all of which we haven't seen coming. So I think that I, I'm optimistic about it for that reason, because I really think that, you know, some really cool stuff can come out of this Kenobi thing because they'll find something that actually matters. Because, I mean, we've talked about, we talked about it years ago on the show. Like, I mean, you talked about the Kenobi book. It was kind of pointless. So, and I mean, it's yeah. what, you know, what do we need to know about him? There's what happened that could possibly impact galactic events. I mean, I'm looking at the character's timeline, and now that we've got Master and Apprentice as a book, we see him before episode one when he was still a child, like a true Padawan to um, to Qui-Gon. And then we get episode one through three. We got all the Clone Wars episodes in between. We've got his appearance in Rebels to finish off his rivalry with Maul. And then we got him in four, five, and six. Like, how much more can Obi- Like, where are the gaps in his story that we really need to fill in? That's why I think it's got to be something that's pretty heavy. I mean, I don't know yeah. about you. I mean, it's, it's I mean, got- my, my first thought is that it was just going to be four episodes of him drinking in the cantina. Yeah. But well. and, they, and they've said <laughs> yeah. that they've said that this is going to be like between three and four. Right. They're going to use you and McGregor. McGregor. You and McGregor. You and McGregor. Ewan McGregor was going to be on the show. Yeah, right. No, they're. they're I like you, Star Wars. <laughs> they're basically using his natural age now to age the character appropriately yeah. in the timeline, right? Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. I mean, it, it's got to be something because I don't, I don't think. I mean, first of all, you can't bring Kenobi back without it having some serious weight to it. Because otherwise, you kind of cheapen the character. Yeah, you don't roll out a major character like that unless you've got something really important to do with him. Yeah, I mean, it's not it's not like Han Solo where you could have a Han Solo show where he's just out like on different smuggling missions because you know he's a smuggler, so that's what he was doing. He he, he wasn't out there, you know. Saving. Yeah, you can kind of just invent whatever the hell stories you want about. Yeah, him. yeah, it's it's not like this is the Picard series or something. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's Han, a different podcast. Yeah. Sorry, Han, Han Solo's not out there curing little kids of cancer or anything. He's out there smuggling drugs and stuff, right? Like, so, um, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, th- they've got to do something that is important. So I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with. You know, same th- same thing with the Cassie and Andor show. First of all, I loved Rogue One, so anything Rogue One I can get, I'll take more of. And having his backstory, which I obviously will include the early incarnation of the rebellion, mm-hmm. is awesome. Because I I, I wonder if he's going to run into somebody like say Enfys Nest, and you know the cloud riders and stuff like that, because, you know, they got all that coaxium, like 60 million credits. So they made reference to starting the rebellion at the end of solo. So is he going to run into somebody like that? You know I mean? I would love if Disney plus eventually did like a, like a CW DC universe kind of thing where they've got all these different shows that are interconnected, just, just build like almost like a television based universe. I mean, it would still tie into the movies, of course, but all the shows would, would help each other out. Yeah. More so than just constantly leaning on the movies for stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would be cool, but I think. Well, you think about a character like Ahsoka. Ahsoka exists solely outside the movies until that voiceover in episode nine. She feels like as much a part of the Star Wars universe as anything else that you, appeared in the films. You know, she you know, she's going to be in something live action. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's. It's it's kind of inevitable at this point because she's been in so much stuff and she's such a fan favorite character. So clearly you can put something on the small screen and have it mean just as much over time as the stuff that appears on the big screen. Yeah, I was just reading something the other day. I, I had forgotten how how the fandom kind of hated Ahsoka when she first came out. 
Oh God. Yeah. Everyone yeah. just could not stand her. And then all, and now she's like one of the biggest deals there is. It's like, and that's pretty cool, man. I think, I think that's a, you know, a tribute to the strength of the character. It's very good writing. You know, I, I like, I like when that stuff happens. I, th- I think it's cool. Yeah. My, my one takeaway ever from rebels is that I really liked just grown up Ahsoka as a character. I was like, that's all I took from that series. Like, I, Ahsoka's a badass now. <laughs> <laughs> right. That surprised me when when it was first airing. It was like, you know, I didn't really know how much I cared about Ahsoka until, you know, it was clear that she was Fulcrum. And I was like, oh my God, Ahsoka's back. I'm like, yeah. When did I start caring about Ahsoka this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right. <laughs> Isn't it weird how like the like how, how like when we get a new show or something, you'll get a legacy character. And even if it's somebody you didn't really give a damn about, you just get so pumped up. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the perfect example. Like, I haven't seen all the Clone Wars to really know that much about Ahsoka. But when she was in it, I was like, oh, I know that character. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And, and, you know, we're we're, all three of us are old school wrestling fans. It's like you didn't give a crap about people like Jake the Snake, but like he'd disappear for 10 years and come back at the Royal Rumble and you'd be pumped about it. (laughs) Right. Exactly what it's like. (laughs) You're like, I know this guy's hot trash, but I don't care. (laughs) I recognize him, and this is awesome. Man, I totally <laughs> missed the Repo Man. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> oh, the Boogeyman was my favorite. I never knew it. <laughs> it's like how pumped we're going to get during the Cassie and Andor series when they introduce Starkiller. <laughs> is, is, are you just hoping out loud again? Y- yes. <laughs> oh. Make the damn guy canon already. How much does Sam Witwer have to do for friggin' Star Wars? Jesus Christ. Uh. It is crazy. He has not shown up on screen yet. Like, he's been in video games and he's done voices for Stormtroopers, but that's it. Throw the, the man a damn guys- bone. You you put that yeah. that ass clown from from Hot Fuzz in two movies. <laughs> you know. Get uh, <laughs> wait, si- Simon Pegg was in a second one. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, one. I thought he was in. Well, he did- was on Car Plot. Yeah, I thought never- he. I thought he did something else in one of the other movies. He's he's so tight with JJ. He's probably something in Episode Nine. Yeah, I swear to God, I I might have to look at. I swear to God, I heard he did something that had to do with Episode Nine, though. I saw like I think it was like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Like someone had tweeted out or it came out that it was his birthday or something. And I just wanted to tweet out that like I hope you get in like a minor a minor very inconvenience and car accident today. I hope you, know? you show up to work late. Yeah, that guy that guy will always rub me the wrong way for just his loud ass mouth about those of us who like the prequels, like calling us out like you're not a Star Wars fan and you're an idiot. It's like man, up yours. The hell do you know? I, I, I've always hated that. Well, you're not as big of a fan as I am. Shut up. It'd be like if me if I walked around telling people, well, because I have Star Wars tattooed on my arms, I'm better than you. I'm a better fan. Like, no, it just means I don't mind looking like an idiot in public. And right. you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you have some class. I do not. <laughs> so, oh, well, on that note, why don't we uh, close up shop for another episode here? So uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. Again, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download, which would be a great thing to do now because the novelization for The Rise of Skywalker comes out in less than 30 days. No, it doesn't. What? It comes out middle of March, I thought. They bumped it. They bumped it. Some somebody said that they're like on Audible. They're getting notices that they that the release date has been moved, something, and they don't know. I thought, I thought I heard April something. Yeah, that's it. We riot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. It won't affect me because I wasn't going to use my credit on that anyway. I don't like the novelizations. This this this, this never never grabbed me. I love the I love the stories when they're in the movies, but uh, yeah, the novelizations just too many details for me. Kind of seems weird. Like they just tried to throw in a lot of adjectives. But anyway. Well, I think this is the one movie that needs some extra explanation. That's why I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, well, yeah, okay. Cool. Well, you can let us know. It'll be AJ's book corner. But (laughs) uh, you can get your customized Nerf Herder Council swag at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com. You can find the Nerf Herder Council where you can find pretty much any podcasts. Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, CastBox, Spotify. What, What are you pointing at now? Well, Star Wars Friends Podcast is now following us on Twitter, so we got someone else who can block us in two days. Follow them back. I always follow every podcast back, and then they listen to us or see our tweets and then mute us. 
<laughs> it's like meeting someone off a dating app. You hook up for one drink and you're like, we're not even going to tell each other. We're not seeing each other again. We just understand it's <laughs> our, <laughs> our next T-shirt's just going to have our logo me. on it. And then it's going to have an old school chalkboard tally on it of listeners on one side. <laughs> and it's going to have the Roman numerals up to 23, but then it's going to have a block list on the other side. <laughs> it's got like 100. <laughs> yeah, it's got like 190 on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be short lived. They're a positive fan first Star Wars podcast. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the show called? Uh, Star Wars Friends Podcast. Star Wars Friends Podcast. It was it was good to know you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize. I, in we advance. hardly knew ye. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> we are sorry in advance. Uh, so yeah, you can find us on all these awesome podcast places. Uh, the website is nerfherdercouncil.com. If you are on YouTube, you can find all of our episodes there. Uh, we are on Facebook. You can look us up. If you want to shoot us an email, it's nerfherdercouncil at gmail.com. And we are active on our Twitter page at NHC Podcast. So uh, once again, I'm your host, JT at Dog Pound Jedi. He is AJ at Drake Adams 579. He's Steve at JSteve1005. And by the time we come to you, not this time, but next time, I will have turned 44 years old, which means I will have officially been a Star Wars fan for 40 years. And we'll catch you next time. This bucket of bolts is never going to get us past that blockade. This bucket's got a few surprises left in her. Plus me and Chewie are on it. Ain't that right, Chewie? Hell yeah, you my nerf herder. You my nerf herder.